On behalf of Charlotte's sister cities, board of directors, welcome to this evening's virtual forum celebrating 27 and a half years of Charlotte's sister city relationship with Wrocław, Poland. This is the sixth in a seven part monthly virtual forum series, each featuring one of Charlotte's seven sister cities. I'd like to give special thanks to all students and teachers who are joining us here this evening. Uh, from our registration data, we can see that the following schools are present, Carmel Middle School, Charlotte Christian, Charlotte Latin School, Hickory Grove Christian School, Metro Lina Regional Scholars Academy, Myers Park High School, Providence Day School, South Mech High School, Waddell Language Academy, Weddington High School, Charlotte Country Day School, UNC Charlotte, Queens University, and Davidson College. It's now my pleasure to introduce our community partners who have helped to promote Charlotte Sister Cities programs throughout our community. Uh, these are partners who've been with us for the past year, which include the Charlotte International Cabinet, International House of Charlotte, World Affairs Council of Charlotte, who is assisting us this evening, as with all of our forums, with the webinar software, Bridge House Law, who's helping us on our path to 501c3 nonprofit status, Alliance Francaise of Charlotte, the American Council in Germany, the Zeitkaus Foundation, the Charlotte International Rotary Club, Charlotte North Rotary Club, Sumner Packaging, Waddell Language Academy, Charlotte Latin School, Charlotte Country Day School, Davidson College, UNC Charlotte, the Young Professionals of the World Affairs Council, Young Professionals of International House, and the Great Decisions Lecture Series. We'd also like to say thank you to our ReFounder Circle. These are generous individuals in our community who have contributed financially to the early restart of Charlotte Sister Cities. As mentioned, we're on the path to nonprofit status, but in our early stages, the contributions from these individuals have helped us uh, through this initial stage of our journey. So thank you on behalf of the Board of Directors. This evening, I'd also like to feature our youth leadership team. Uh, these are both middle school, high school, and university students who are working together on a unique project which will be shared at the end of this evening's forum. Uh, but this group meets regularly and they have some exciting plans ahead. They represent five different schools. Uh, members include uh, from Audrey Kell High School, Kevin Liu and Toby Ayunde, from Charlotte Latin School, Ali Liu, from Charlotte Country Day School, Angelina Chen and Sid Modi, uh, from Metrolina Regional Scholars Academy and soon to be part of Weddington High School, Meghna Mittal. From Davidson College, we're fortunate to have a freshman and Bonner Scholar, Hollis Plexico, and uh, Sam Farnham, who's a member of the Charlotte Sister Cities Board of Directors, helped to build our website and is helping to lead this team. So I'd now like to welcome Sam up. Uh, for the introduction of Mayor Kinsey, who will be, uh, who will be starting off today's forum. Uh, over the past year, Sam has interviewed seven former mayors of Charlotte in helping to collect the history of, this, uh, of Charlotte's sister cities. Welcome, Sam. Thank you. Tonight, I'm honored to introduce Mayor Patsy Kinsey. Mayor Kinsey served two terms on the Mecklenburg County Board of Commissioners from 1990 to 1994. She also served on the boards of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners and the North Carolina Child Facility Task Force, as well as Charlotte City Council for 10 years. In 2013, Mayor Kinsey served as mayor of Charlotte, where she helped enrich our relationships with our seven sister cities. In addition, Mayor Kinsey was very involved with sister cities before her time as mayor, as she represented Charlotte in an official trip to Baldeen and has been very involved with many of our sister cities. Thanks to Mayor Kinsey's work, we have a wonderful relationship with Wrocław. We are thankful that Mayor Kinsey has been an amazing supporter of Charlotte Sister Cities, both as mayor and today with her support of our website and current initiatives. Welcome, Mayor Kinsey. Thank you so much, Sam, and good evening. It is a pleasure to welcome and thank all of you for joining us this evening at uh, the forum featuring Charlotte's sister city, Breslau, or, uh, or Poland. I'm delighted that our sister cities program is being revitalized. And I wanna thank those of you who have been instrumental in this important effort. 
I'm very excited about the future of the organization and the people to people exchanges the program will offer. Those exchanges are what make Sister City so important to our community. Through these people to people exchanges and getting to know others from around the world, our lives are truly enriched. Mine certainly has been through a number of search visits, two of which I want to share with you very briefly. First, in 2004, as a Charlotte City Council member, I led a sister city's visit to Baoding, China. While there, we were hosted in the homes of the families. With my host family, I shopped at a local supermarket for our evening dinner. My hostess cooked the meal. It was a delicious fish dish, and we dined at their table in the kitchen. I didn't see a TV anywhere, but there was always some soft music playing in the background. I slept in the daughter's room that night and had a traditional Chinese breakfast the next morning. While the family members did not speak English, we managed to communicate and form a warm friendship. The second experience was traveling to Russia with the YMCA. The Charlotte Y at that time had a sister Y in Moscow. One of the principals in the Moscow Y was a Russian Orthodox priest who invited our group to his church for Sunday worship. We went and after the service was invited back to the priest's home where he and his family served us a huge dinner. We sat around the dinner table talking and laughing as though we were old friends. Afterwards, he proudly showed us around his home as well as showing us, laughing as he did it, his swimming pool which was actually a very large wooden tub. I share these personal stories because it has been through experiences like these that my life has been enriched. Experiencing other cultures, tasting other foods, listening to other music, worshiping in different ways, enjoying conversations, even funny stories like the wooden swimming pool. That helps us to lead, a, a, make a better understanding and understand us of each other and sometimes leads to lasting friendships. This is what Sister Cities has been doing for many years and hopefully through this revitalization, we'll continue to do so for many years to come. With our support, I'm sure it will. Enjoy this evening's forum. It is certainly a pleasure to be with you tonight. Thank you. Mayor Kinsey, thank you very much for those welcoming words and stressing the importance of people to people relationships. You spoke of how the experiences have enriched you, but also uh, it's important to remember how we have the opportunity to enrich the lives of others uh, through what we share and how we welcome people to Charlotte. And thank you for being part of that process for, for many, many years in your leadership capacity in Charlotte. Thank you. Sharing that spirit, I'd now like to welcome Alexis Gordon, who is the city of Charlotte's chief of protocol and who has been a long supporter and advocate for Charlotte's sister cities. Welcome, Alexis. Thank you, David, for having me on tonight. It is my pleasure to introduce um, a wonderful message that is coming straight from Wroclaw. Uh, the first deputy mayor of Wroclaw, Jakub Mazur, supervises the Department of City Development and Strategy. And he also acts as the representative for international affairs. So it's very, very, very awesome that he sends us a greeting for tonight uh, to share the wonderful connections that Vroslov has with Charlotte. Hello, my name is Jakub Mazur. I'm deputy mayor of Wrocław in Poland. It is great pleasure to have this occasion to greet the representatives of Charlotte's sister cities and all noble guests from Charlotte partner cities in Peru, Germany, China, and France. I would like to thank you very much for inviting Wrocław for this invitation to this meeting, despite the reality of pandemia. I strongly believe that our effectiveness as a city managers today, more than ever, relies on international solidarity and friendship. These turbulent days, we are all doing our best to guarantee health and safety to our citizens. Wrocław appreciates cooperation and support of its partner cities and always remain open to support Charlotte anytime it is needed. As you may see on these short films, 
of Wrocław. Wrocław is a beautiful, vivid city with a heritage and with interesting history. City of vibrant academic life and business oriented metropolia, which is waiting to welcome international guests again. On behalf of all citizens of Wrocław, I wish you success and health. I will be honored to welcome you in person in Wrocław as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor Mazur, we know that right now it is past one o'clock in Wrocław and we appreciate the fact that you sent us this video and these greetings to all of our friends in Wrocław who watched this uh, recording, uh, which we will provide in a few days. Uh, we appreciate your support. We look forward to welcoming you to Charlotte and we look forward to our visits uh, to your city. Thank you for that welcome. And now uh, to introduce the next portion of the forum, I'd like to invite our Vice President for Global Affiliations, Diane St. John, uh, to welcome our next speaker. Hi, thank you, David. I'm happy to be able to introduce uh, Alina McNichol because she's been a vibrant part of Charlotte's international community for a long time. Uh, she was raised in Philadelphia in a Polish-American household and speaks Polish fluently, primarily from being able to go visit her, her family and friends back in Wrocław and in Poland uh, as frequently as she can. Alina served as the executive director uh, of both Charlotte Sister Cities and the Charlotte International Cabinet between the years of 2005 and 2011. And she is now the director of customer service and community engagement for Opera Carolina. Um, there, she handles all their civic engagement initiatives and manages all aspects of the subscriber and uh, patron organizations and relationships. She also performs with Opera Carolina as part of the resident company and sings in other reg uh, regional singing groups as well. She remains active on many levels in the international community, not just as chair of the Wrocław Committee for Charlotte Sister Cities, but also she serves on the board of the Polish School of Charlotte. And she's an active member of the Women's Impact Fund. So welcome, please, um, Alina McNichol. Wow, thank you for that kind intro, Diane. Um, I would like to give you all a little more background on the city of Wrocław and on our 27 year partnership with them. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I have a little PowerPoint uh, to show and um, hopefully you are all now looking at a map of uh, Poland. So Wrocław is the fourth largest city in Poland. They have a population of about 700,000 people. It's the capital of a region called Lower Silesia, which is on Poland's Western border with Germany. And this is a very historic region that is known for its rich natural resources. The city lies along the Odra River where it intersects with four other rivers. It's actually built on 12 islands and it's surrounded by rivers and canals. It's often called the Venice of Poland for this reason. There are over a hundred bridges within the city boundaries and many of them are very well-known landmarks that people familiar with the city recognize all over. Wrocław is a beautiful, historic and diverse city that ranks among one of the most livable places in Europe and it has a very complicated history. From the 10th century to the 14th century, the city was ruled by Polish kings, but after that, it was under the control of many others, including Bohemia, Hungary, Prussia, and finally Germany. At the end of World War II, in August of 1945, Wrocław and much of that region of Silesia was transferred back to Poland. All of those influences over the years have left their mark on the culture of Wrocław, and most particularly on the architecture throughout the historic sections of the city. A lot of the city was destroyed in fierce fighting at the end of World War II. 90% of their industry and 70% of the residential areas were destroyed. And much of those areas that were destroyed were the historical sections of the city. Um, much of that has been restored. In fact, most of it has been restored. You can see these two beautiful examples on the market square um, that looks very different now um, and almost like it should have looked in the first place. 
um, present day Wrocław is a mix of centuries old neighborhoods surrounding a medieval market square that dates all the way back to 1241. And of course, a lot of newer modern buildings. Wrocław today is a center for Poland's electronics industry and um, data processing. And it also has heavy industry like foundries, machinery plants, and textile mills. I mentioned that Silesia, Lower Silesia, where Wrocław is the capital, is a region that is well known for the richness of its natural resources. Wrocław is also a cultural and scientific center. The University of Wrocław, which has produced nine Nobel Prize winners, is the largest of 23 universities in the city. There are also many museums and theaters. There's a beautiful botanical garden, and Wrocław has the largest zoo in Poland as well. So it's a city full of wonderful attractions. They also host two major music festivals every year. I have to put that in because I'm a musician. Um, one last really fun fact about Wrocław. Scattered around the city, there's a tiny world of pint-sized bronze statues. These are called the dwarves or krasnale of Wrocław. To understand the significance of these little people, you need to remember that after World War II, Poland and the rest of the Eastern Bloc countries had a communist form of government. This was not by their choice. This government was imposed on all those countries and there was of course a lot of resistance. The original dwarf statues were actually a tribute to an anti-communist underground political movement that was called the Orange Alternative. This movement started in Wrocław in the 1980s and the symbol was a dwarf. After the fall of communism in Poland, these dwarves also became a symbol of the city of Wrocław. Starting with the first dwarf statue in 2001, there are now over 250 of these little statues all around Wrocław. Most of them are not more than a foot tall. And as you can see from all the pictures on this slide, they represent all different aspects of life in Wrocław. For example, the prisoner dwarf sits on um, in a window of an old building that used to be a prison. Then we have the cash machine dwarf. This is a dwarf going to an ATM and the plaque next to him reads that he is going to the dwarf branch of the Bank of the West. So uh, people have a lot of fun with these dwarves. As you can see also they dress them up. Osolinek, the one at the bottom um, who's in front of the library is dressed up for Christmas uh, and above him the three dwarves there represent um, Wrocław's disabled community, and they have been equipped with masks for COVID-19. Um, so these are really a fun aspect of the city, and uh, new ones crop up all the time. Dwarf hunting has become so popular with tourists that maps and phone apps with GPS coordinates are available everywhere if you feel like going hunting when you visit the city. Finally, and most importantly, when did Wrocław become a sister city of Charlotte? So Wrocław is our sixth sister city. On September 5th, 1993, a Charlotte delegation that was led by then mayor Richard Vinroot traveled to Wrocław for the signing ceremony of our partnership. In the 1990s and the early 2000s, Charlotte and Wrocław had many wonderful exchanges, including the ones that are on this slide. The most important aspect of a sister city's partnership is the power of personal connections and citizen diplomacy. Um, I found some photos and so I would like to finish by showing you some photos of citizen diplomacy in action. We're going to start with a photo from um, someone who introduced me this evening, who we all know very well, Diane St. John. Um, there was a cultural exchange with the Wrocław folk dance ensemble and Diane was one of the home hosts who took care of the folks that came to dance. Um, you see at the top, a picture of her with two of the dancers, at the bottom, some of the other folks that came, and in the middle, this is a picture of the group um, during one of their performances. Cultural exchanges like this um, are, were really a key to a lot of the exchanges that happened early on with Wrocław. And as Mayor Kinsey mentioned, home hosting is an aspect of the sister city's relationship that is just really unique and a wonderful way to connect people one-on-one. -on -one. We also had educational exchanges with Wrocław. Um, this photo is a photo of one of our office interns, Yulita Słodka, who came to us from Poland. This is a, a photo of her with her home host who took her to Charleston to show her a little bit of our area. 
Uh, Yulita came to us in a really interesting way. We needed an intern who was fluent in French. And it just so happened that although she was Polish, she was majoring in French at university. So she came over, had several home hosts, and she helped us with a program that we were involved in that brought artisans from all of our sister cities to the Southern Christmas show. The artisan that I just pulled up a photo of was the Polish artisan that came and displayed her wares one of the years that we were there. Yulita translated from French to Polish, from French to English, from Polish to English. Uh, sometimes she threw Russian and German in there as well. Uh, she was a wonderful example of the cross-cultural kinds of experiences that you can get in sister cities. And finally, we have had several delegation visits to Wrocław. These two photos are from the last visit, and you're going to hear a little bit more about that from our other speakers. Um, that's me in the middle with Nancy Carter, who was then the representative of the city who came with us on the trip. Um, this was in 2009. And uh, this trip involved the Queen's University Choir, which did an exchange with the choir in Wrocław. And Nancy, as the city representative, was there to learn a little bit about some of the economic aspects of our relationship with Wrocław. So I hope that gives you a, a general overview of how rich a relationship we have had in the past with Wrocław and how much we have to build on in the future. Uh, I'm gonna finish now and I'd like to hand it over to Charlotte Sister Cities board member, Jennifer Duru Perry, uh, who is going to introduce our next speaker. So uh, Jennifer. But first, Selena, I am I'm just gonna call an audible because we received a video from Vaz, oh. which I feel which I feel will help to complement these exceptional photos. And we'd just like to mention that those photos that Alina, who is the chair of our Vatswa uh, Sister City Committee, shared are folks who have hosted in the past, but hopefully one day that will be you, those of you in the audience who can help to welcome our guests. But here is a video that was shared uh, with us by uh, the mayor's office in Wrocław. We promised that Wrocław would wait for you and we would meet again soon. We always keep our promises. The time has just come. to discover, to see, to experience. Make good use of your time. It would be great to see you again. We are waiting for you whenever you are ready. Let's meet in Wutzwav. I don't know about you, but when I see that video, I feel so fortunate that Wutzwav is our sister city and I look forward to being able to visit once this pandemic finishes up and, and we're almost there. But now to lead us to the next phase of this forum, I'd like to welcome one of our newest board members for Charlotte's Sister Cities, Jennifer Duruper. Thank you, David. So I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Ms. Sophie Danish, uh, who was a junior at Davidson College, majoring in history and studio art. This semester, Sophie is interning with Charlotte Sister Cities with a focus on monuments and public displays of our sister cities, as well as the planning of the Wurzwald Forum. Sophie is a native of Bethesda, Maryland, and a graduate of the Edmund Burke School. In the past, she has interned with the Congress for New Urbanism and has served as an assistant teacher with Horizons Greater Washington. So Sophie, thank you for moderating. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, as a moderator, I'll be monitoring the Q&A. Uh, so as you start to hear from our panelists, um, be sure to put your questions in the Q&A. And um, once we get to towards the end of um, the webinar, we will answer some of them. So um, be sure to answer questions if you have any in mind. Um, now I'd like to invite um, Leslie Sellers to introduce Chris Burnham. Thanks, Sophie. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce you all to Chris Burnham, who will share some of his experiences uh, from Watswap. 
Chris grew up in a village in Saskatchewan, Canada, which had a strong Polish immigration history beginning in the 1890s. Pierogies and cabbage rolls were normal food and a sizable portion of his town had Polish surnames. After high school, Chris joined the US Air Force and spent eight years working in tactical communications in both mobile and field environments. And he lived in Germany, Italy, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and Kuwait. Um, it was during his military service that he was able to make his first trip to Poland. And his first tour was to Bolesławiec, which is a town as famous for its Polish pottery. It's also in the same province of Lower Silesia, which is where Wroclaw is the capital. After serving in the military, Chris lived in Iraq for four years and started one of, one of the first military, or excuse me, one of the first internet services providers there. He moved to Wroclaw at the end of 2014, and he chose the town because he thought the city was pleasant and he thought the people there were very friendly. At the end of 2019, he started splitting his time between Charlotte and Wroclaw. And he greatly enjoys travel, having been to 90 countries, including places like Syria, Turkmenistan, and Bruni. Uh, Chris chose Charlotte because of the climate, and he actually found us by wandering here from the Blue Ridge Parkway. He is currently living near Lake Wiley and has recently returned from a trip from Poland in March, and he's going to share some of that information with us tonight. So we welcome Chris. Thank you, Leslie, for that fantastic introduction. Um, so yes, I've been living in Wrocław off and on for the last six and a half years. And the reason I live there is it's a fantastically friendly and accessible city. Uh, I didn't actually plan to move there when I first went. Uh, I was just traveling around Poland and I had such good experiences in Wrocław. People were very welcoming uh, into their homes and to meet their families and stuff like that. So I had a fantastic time. And what really interests me about Wrocław is all of the, not only the, the, the older history, but also the contemporary culture. Uh, some of the artists that write about Wrocław or that live in Wrocław and things like that. Uh, for example, there's a quite famous Polish artist called Ryszard Kaja who makes posters of all the cities in Poland and, and does really beautiful work. And there's an entire series of uh, books by Mark Krajewski called Death in Breslau uh, that are written about the city of Wrocław. Oh, what else to say? Uh, if you're interested in Wrocław, there's a ton of English language resources available. Uh, for example, there's an online newspaper called Wrocław Uncut. There's also several Facebook groups, uh, Wrocław International, Wrocław Expats, uh, and they all operate in English. So you can ask any questions and it's a great forum to get information about the city. Uh, what else can I say? Mm, it's a beautiful place. It's a friendly place. Uh, it's an incredibly nice place to live. There's a river that runs through the center of the city and it's very relaxing and accessible. It's a great place to go on a bicycle trip. It's a great place to walk. Uh, so I highly encourage anybody to go visit as soon as it's possible. And I'll turn it back to you, Sophie. Thank you, Chris. Um, it's now my pleasure to invite the Assistant Provost for International Programs, Joel Gallegos, to introduce Ginger Wyrick. Good evening. It's my pleasure to introduce Ginger Wyrick. Ginger is an author, composer, and editor of several works from Abingdon Press, including Church Music for Children, Church Choir 101, Choir Members Companion, and Joseph, What a Life. Professor Wyrick is active in several music organizations, including past president of the North Carolina chapter of the American Choral Directors Association, American Guild of Organists, Fellowship of Methodists in Music and Worship Arts, among others. At UNC Charlotte, she conducts the Women's Glee program named the Charlotteans. For the last several years, UNC Charlotte's celebration of International Women's Day has been a wonderful success, largely due to the Charlottean performances annually at this event. It's my pleasure to introduce Ginger. Thank you so much, Joel, and it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. In 2009, um, I had the privilege of leading a delegation of 28 people from Charlotte to visit Wrocław. 
and it was a two-fold visit. It was a cultural exchange um, for me to be able to take the chamber singers from the universe, uh, Queen's University of Charlotte. We had 18 students traveling with me, along with some family members and delegates representing the city of Charlotte on this trip. While we were there, we partnered with the Angelus Choir and gave five concerts, five formal concerts and three casual performances. And part of these concerts were joint performances with the Angelus Choir, which made it extra special as we got to know one another and exchange conversations and go out into the evening after concerts and spend time in the city together and um, getting to know one another. Our opening concert took place in the beautiful old restored city hall. This 14th century design building was a perfect place for us to experience our first concert. But perhaps the most special part of the evening was when we began our warm-up. And I knew that the buildings that we would experience in the architecture would be amazing. But to be able to see and hear the sounds as my students experienced these structures for the first time were incredible. We began our warm-up and one of my students stopped us and said, Professor Wyrick, is that us? That was the moment I had been waiting for. All of a sudden, our music took on a life that it had, we had never experienced in the rehearsal hall because for the first time we got to hear our music in a space that our composers knew all so well. We also were able to uh, perform at the Ninth Loala Secondary School um, in, a, in a standing room only concert. And then also we did a concert, a public concert sponsored by the Retro Trams celebrating the honor of the 200th birthday of Polish poet Juliusz Słowacki. And it was sponsored by the Polaska Television. We had a wonderful um, experience with that. But perhaps the highlight of, the, of our time in Wrocław was an opportunity to meet with government officials and the U.S. consulate of that time, Ann Hall, in celebrating 90 years of U.S.-Polish relations. We had a wonderful evening of uh, speeches, and then we got to um, share some of our music while being there as well. We toured the city, and also we got to venture out to other areas of Poland um, and experience um, the richness of the countryside. Um, my husband also um, gave a couple of technical uh, lectures at the area universities and enjoyed getting to meet and stays connected with some of those people that he met. The city also uh, gave us the privilege of visiting a newly renovated opera house of Wrocław where we saw Bizet's Carmen and that was a wonderful experience to, um, to see the modern interpretation of this timeless opera. We stayed in a hostel while we were there. The staff was incredibly helpful and kind. If we encountered any um, challenges, they were always there to help us find a solution. The city welcomed us with gift bags in each room for all of our students. And I still carry the lanyard um, with my keys on it now that I got on that trip. We treasure our friendships that we made in, this, in our sister city, as well as the friendships of all who traveled with us on that journey. The history that we lived brought to life years of study from books in ways that we could not possibly imagine from print. But having been able to walk those halls, to hear those sounds, and to meet the people of Wrocław. Singing in these historic places with their amazing architecture gave us a better understanding of our composers and allowed us to experience our music in new and fresh ways. And for those we encountered in Wrocław, music bridged a language and geographical and cultural differences allowing us to better understand one another. I brought home a different choir and more importantly I brought home changed people changed by the people, the places, and the experiences that we had shared together in Wrocław. I personally have remained connected with some of the singers of the Angelus Choir via Facebook, and now these young people have families of their own and their own life experiences, and it's been a joy to see them grow and develop. 
I've experienced my own experimentation with some recipes of food that I experienced for the first time while visiting the city. And I have stayed attuned to the political and economic concerns regarding Poland because I know people there. This experience changed our lives and it made our world a little smaller and it drew us closer to hope and perhaps peace. I look forward to the day when I can visit Wrocław again. Thank you for this opportunity to be with you this evening. Thank you, Ginger. Um, I'd now like to invite back David Lynn to introduce Mara uh, Laowski. Thank you, Sophie. It's my pleasure to introduce Mara Lahofsky. She is a native of Wrocław who immigrated uh, to Charlotte as a teenager. She's currently an account executive at Capgemini, focusing on the financial services sector and has 20 years of diverse experience serving clients ranging from startups to Fortune 500 companies, helping them to align business and organizational strategies across banking, insurance, retail, manufacturing, and healthcare. She earned her bachelor's degree in international studies from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and an MBA from Queens University of Charlotte. She currently serves on the board of the Polish School of Charlotte, and she's a wonderful ambassador of all things Polish. And she's raising two children who carry on this love of Poland, its language, food, and culture. Welcome, Mara. Thank you, David. I sincerely appreciate the lovely introduction. I am delighted and honored to be here tonight, um, especially as this forum is really intended to work with the new members and reignite the partnership with Wrocław. I wanted to take more of a personal approach and connect the dots and maybe weave a thread in the tapestry of being a global citizen as I share my experience, not only with everyone listening today, but significantly for the young people, um, either in middle school or high school and college, because I have two teenagers and I think it's incredibly powerful when you get a lens from an international perspective. And that global presence is something that will continue to grow even as we have dealt with the pandemic for the past year, I know we remain connected and um, my strength and my background has really been cultivated in being split between two countries. My heart belongs to Poland because I was born in Wrocław. I have been in the Charlotte metro area for close to 40 years. So I also consider myself um, a privileged Charlottean. I love living in this area, but backing up to kind of share my personal story. My parents were political refugees. We could have ended up anywhere in the US and um, with various stars aligning and God's plan, we ended up here in Charlotte. We were the first Polish family that was sponsored to this area in the early 80s. Um, I, like I said, I remained here. My parents always had a global and international perspective. My mother taught German. Both of my parents in the late 80s as Poland began to open up, became uh, a part of the program at Charlotte Sister Cities to support the first framework and the building blocks for the partnership that was formally established in 1993. So as a young woman, young adult still under my parents' roof, I remember uh, having diplomats come to our house and those connections, those relationships outside of a conference call or a formal business setting were really established in the living room where people shared their lives and their stories and those building blocks uh, resonated with me. I went and did my undergrad in international studies. I'm multilingual. And as I looked for internships to help build my future, I ended up going to Wrocław in the mid 90s and had an opportunity to actually intern at Charlotte Sister Cities with the connections that my parents had made years prior and, and kept them going. And then fast forward to early 2000s as I had an opportunity to host one of the um, young ensemble dance groups that came. And then we hosted a delegation in, in my home and the deputy mayor. Those are all ways of building relationships and expanding the diversity of thought that is realized when we connect with people across the globe. Wrocław offers this, Charlotte offers this, 
And I'm excited to say that throughout the 90s and the 2000s, the opportunities were never ending, whether it was one person, whether it was in email, whether it was through early aspects of social media, whether it was a recommendation for someone from a work perspective, whether it was helping someone come here to do an internship and vice versa, those have always continued, those stepping stone and building blocks to connect the dots for that bigger tapestry, I think has been a phenomenal part of my personal experience. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I have infused this into my children who are um, still in high school and every summer outside of last year when things shut down have had the opportunity to travel to Poland. They go to language camps, they go to Wrocław, they know part of my heart remains there. They have, as Alina mentioned, used the map to navigate around Wrocław and find all the dwarfs. There was actually one picture that Alina shared earlier, but she didn't emphasize it was with the dwarf from Cap Gemini, since that is the company I currently work for in a, in a global capacity. But again, I am humbled. I am very proud of both being um, a Wrocław native and a Charlottean. And if any of you have any questions um, along the way or after this forum, please feel free to reach out. I am delighted that this partnership is being reignited. And I think there are many, many fabulous opportunities that will come. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Thank you. Um, we now are set to begin the Q&A session um, with the panel. So as a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the Q&A box. All right. So uh, if all the panelists could turn their cameras on. Um, and so an anonymous attendee asks, what is your favorite part of Rutzlov? Um, so I guess anyone is welcome to answer that. Um, I'll, I'll start um, because it's, it's, it's easy for me. Um, I love the whole city, but I just love the old market square. It's so beautiful. Um, that was uh, in the slide that I showed that showed um, the restored buildings after the war. Um, those were all on the market square. It's, um, it's colorful. It's a reminder of the diversity of Wrocław's history. Um, and it's, it shows the, the love and the care that all the residents had for the city after it was so terribly destroyed. They were so proud of it and they needed to bring it back so that it would look the way that, um, that they felt it should. So that's my favorite part. Alina, this is Maura, I will weigh in. I think I was um, probably in my undergraduate years in the 90s when I was at Chapel Hill. And I remember Wrocław because as a young adult, I became more and more involved. Um, they celebrated a thousand years. And I think it's phenomenal that there's this deep history and it has phases. There are phases that are better known and less known and the influence as the borders shifted. Um, and, and what you mentioned, the rebuilding part of that old market square, that's where you feel the heartbeat of the city. Um, it has survived, even though it was demolished. There's amazing blueprints that show the, the previous uh, visual aspects of the architecture. And then when you go today, you can still live and breathe it as if it was a thousand years ago. All right. Um, another question we received are that um, I understand that Bratislav has one of the best Christmas markets in Europe. Has anyone here attended it? And the question also asks, have any artisans from Wrocław participated in Charlotte's Christmas market, which I think Alina mentioned uh, did happen. Uh, so Alina, if you have any details about that, that would be fun to learn about. Um, it, it did, just very briefly. I have not attended the market in Wrocław, I, I, I'm sorry to say, but um, we did for, a, for quite a while. Charlotte's sister cities brought over artisans from each of the cities to participate in the Southern Christmas show. Um, that pro I don't recall how long that program went on for, but it was for quite a long time. And there were artisans, many artisans from Wrocław that came and displayed there. Uh, and we can answer that question more thoroughly um, if the person who asked is, is more interested in that. It was certainly a wonderful program. But I think that um, Mara or Chris, I'm sure one of you has attended the Christmas market in Wrocław. I've definitely Chris, been at the- Do you wanna the, go uh, first? Yeah. 
Go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Yep. I've uh, I've definitely been at the Christmas market. I think every year that I've been there, uh, it's cold, but there is hot mulled wine and warm sausages and pierogi and um, some some soup, and it's uh, on the market square and just an incredibly charming experience and you know it's a nice place to spend some time. Highly recommended if you're there that time of year. Yeah, and I'll add, um, I have family in Nuremberg in Germany as well. So I've been to Christkindmarkt, which is really the original uh, market, Christmas market from many, many, many generations ago. I've had the privilege of going once to the one in Wrocław and it was amazing. As Chris mentioned, it, it was cold, it was snowing. Uh, the ambiance was beautiful. And one of the most uh, unique pieces of jewelry that I've ever purchased, a Polish amber, I found at the market versus in a store, and that was a really nice experience. So if you ever have a chance to go, I highly recommend it. Awesome. Um, this is an interesting question. How has COVID-19 affected the people of Wrocław and their relationship with the city? Or I guess this question might ask our relationship with the city, so maybe Charlotte's relationship with the city. Um, I guess you can answer it however you'd like. Uh, just speaking as to the, the current condition in Crossroads since I was there about a, a month ago, um, you know, obviously the city is much quieter as everything, every place is during COVID times. Um, Polish people sometimes aren't uh, aren't strict rule abiders, let's say. Um, so there, there is still somewhat of an interesting social scene going on, and uh, it's still very lively, especially in summer yeah, and in spring, people have their barbecues by the river while still being distanced from other people and uh, and stuff like that. So it's, it's definitely made the city quieter, um, but there's still, I don't know, there's still stuff going on. There's still lots of nice stuff to see. Um, another person asks, how is the city of Charlotte represented in Wrocław, if at all? I'm not totally sure. Maybe we don't have the answer to that one. Well, there, there is a corresponding organization um, in Wrocław, which I believe um, works very directly out of the mayor's office uh, that oversees their city to city partnerships. In Europe, a lot of times they call sister cities, twin cities. Um, and so that's, that's what we're regarded as. Um, and, and so there certainly is an, an organization on their end um, and when we went to do the official exchanges, um, they, that organization and the folks that worked in that organization were usually the ones that organized what was going on on the trips and helped to facilitate the trips. Um, as far as what's going on, what has gone on in the immediate past, I'm not really sure. Um, our own organization has unfortunately been do dormant for a while. Uh, and so I, I'm not sure that a whole lot has gone on in the last five years or so. But going back 10 or 15 years, we certainly had a lot of back and forth. Um, so I don't anticipate that it'll be hard to get things started up again. Right. Um, another person asks, what do you feel is the most important next step in further building our relationship with Rutzov? Well, I can say I'm ready to go back and I've got a choir that I'd love to take. <laughs> But there's something to be said when we can share a, something that's in common. And I can say that from the experience that we had, where we partnered with another choir and did some things together. We shared repertoire. Uh, we sang for one another. We ate meals with one another. We got to know one another and we stayed in touch with one another. Those kinds of experiences enrich your time in someone in another city, um, another country, but also they build lifelong friendships and they change us as people. So, um, I'm ready to go. That's a great answer. Um, do other panelists have a response to that question? I, I agree with Ginger in that I think um, establishing exchanges of, of you know, uh, relationships, information, friendships um, are the most important way to, to, to get things going again and built again. We have enough people here in Charlotte that have some famili familiarity with the previous programs and also a lot of people that are just very interested in making connections and finding out a little bit more about the region. 
So I think that um, the first step is to just figure out what the best way is to connect and start building relationships again. And then exchanges would be a wonderful thing to, uh, to grow out of that. Um, another attendee asks, and this might be our last question. We have a couple minutes left, so this could be a fun last question. Is there a type of food or dessert that is specific to Wrocław? How is the food different or similar? I suppose in comparison to Charlotte. So maybe I'll start, and I don't know if it's necessarily just for Wrocław versus Poland, but I'm sure many of you guys have heard about pierogi. And even at the Polish store or Russian store here in the Charlotte area, or sometimes other locations, you can find pierogi. Um, I think the pierogi in my area of Wrocław that make it unique is that it's not just the potato and cheese ones or the meat ones or the cabbage and mushroom ones that more of us see as traditional Polish um, kind of uh, meals. The pierogi that you can get during the summertime with fresh strawberries or fresh blueberries that have a little bit of sour cream, but it's like creme fraiche, so it's sweeter and a little bit of sugar are a phenomenal and very unique dish. And that to me really stands out among many other amazing food items. One of the uh, one of the things you can get in Brussels that I don't find in a lot of other cities in Poland is something called jix. Um, and it's a very tasty baked potato with cottage cheese. Uh, but it, oddly enough, it, it does seem quite specific to, to Wrocław. Uh, you can usually get it for the equivalent of about $2. So if it's late at night and you're looking for something to, to sustain you, you just walk into the store and order some. Thank you. Um, I think we've reached our time to conclude the panel. So I want to thank everyone on the panel and all of the awesome questions that the attendees um, provided for us. And I'm going to hand it back to David. Thank you, Sophie. And thank you to the members of the panel uh, for answering those many interesting questions, to everyone who's been asking questions, and for those wonderful words to help to share the city of Wrocław with all of us. And it's now my pleasure uh, to present a former member of Charlotte City Council uh, who visited Wrocław and who is currently the elected supervisor for Mecklenburg Soil Water Conservation uh, District. Uh, and who, interesting enough, when I was looking at her background, when she was a student at Randolph-Macon Women's College, majored in French and Spanish, and then as a, a master's student at UNC Chapel Hill, focused on Romance language and French. And I'm, I'm curious if uh, Supervisor Carter, uh, Nancy Carter, also has a background in speaking Polish as well. But welcome, uh, Nancy Carter. We're glad you're with us. Just so glad to see you, David, and to participate in this. Can you hear me? We can hear you, but we don't see you. Yet. <laughs> My apologies. I'm out on the deck. At South in South Carolina, babysitting a two-year-old. So my apologies, but I did want to say thank you to everyone who's putting effort towards restarting our sister cities program. It was a wonderful experience for me. Rostov was a beautiful experience in historic preservation. Something I carried back here. The interest to preserve our history in Charlotte should be very important to us. We brought back a fire chief dwarf and love that symbol of resistance. And it's something that inspires me as I work through some of the issues. I also had a marvelous contact with people about environmentalism. And I love the suggestion of quiet zones. I think that's something that we could look into in Charlotte. It's something that has founded my interest in this soil and water conservation movement. I saw beautiful farmlands there that was sustaining, sustaining for me as well. The personal contacts, interactions, seeing that wonderful chamber singers perform and interact, everything was a gift to us. Alina, Ginger, all of the folks who put this together, it was such a special treat for my husband, my daughter and myself. I recommend it for all of our council members to go over to all of our sister cities. I also had a chance to visit Limoges and love that experience as well. So please, let's get this reactive. I'd love to help out as ever I can. And thank you, David, for this opportunity. And thanks to each of you for participating.
Thank you, Supervisor Carter. We appreciate you joining us. And I was also recently told that a current member of City Council, uh, Greg Phipps, is with us as well. And if you're listening, uh, thank you for your many contributions to Charlotte's Sister Cities. He was a panelist for one of our past forums. You know, we have learned so much about the rich history of people who've been engaged in Sister City for years, decades, and have helped to foster these partnerships and relations, but there's also the future. And we are so proud of the students who are a part of Charlotte Sister Cities. Uh, before you met Sam Farnham, who is a member of our board of directors, I'm gonna welcome Sam back and he's gonna tell you about this incredible project that our Youth Leadership Committee is working on. Welcome back, Sam. Hello everyone. The Charlotte Sister Cities Youth Leadership Committee is made up of seven students from five different high schools. It was founded about a month and a half ago and is chaired by both Hollis Plexico, a freshman at Davidson, and myself. Our group's main goal and project right now is to design a global third grade curriculum in line with the North Carolina education standards that connects to the diversity and culture of Charlotte's seven sister cities. Right now, we are looking for any other students in high school from the Charlotte area who may be interested and involved um, in this project and um, our group in general. Also, we are looking for elementary teachers who want to get involved and who'd be willing to give us advice as we begin to build the curriculum. So far, we have met with a couple of different teachers, third grade teachers and administrators, interviewed school leaders and observed third grade classes. And our goal is to talk to CMS leaders and develop a curriculum template to present over the next month. If you have any questions, comments, or any resources, students, or teachers that may want to help, please email shawsisterstudiesylc at gmail.com. Um, Mr. Lin will be at the end of this forum. He'll put it up on the slides, and I'll, I can type it in the chat as well. And feel free to email that if you have any questions or if you have any teachers or students who may be interested. Thank you so much. Sam, thank you. And thank you to all of the high school students, middle school students, university students who are part of our efforts. We welcome you. Those of you who are listening that are not yet involved, please get in touch with us. We, we'd like to have you join Sam and Hollis and Sophie and, and others who are contributing to our efforts. In closing, if you've been inspired to get more involved in Charlotte's relationship with Vatswav, I would like to invite you to join our Vatswav committee, which is led by Alina McNichol, who you've met uh, during the panel. Uh, she will welcome you on board and, and we will continue to explore what this partnership will look like in the future. Consider this forum a springboard uh, to greater things yet to come. I'd like to say thank you to Jesse Herman, who has helped overcome several obstacles today uh, and that has led way to a successful forum, but she is managing this webinar in the background. Jesse, we're gonna pull you out front at the Kumasi Forum, which is coming up on May 19th. That will be our seventh and final uh, part of this series focusing on each of our sister cities. So again, the Kumasi Forum will take place on May 19th at seven o'clock p.m. also on Zoom webinar. We appreciate uh, Keelan, uh, one of our interns at Davidson who is helping to plan that event. Lastly, I would like to once again recognize our generous community partners for their help with publicity along the way. We appreciate your joint support. We welcome the contributions of others. Uh, we look forward to supporting all sister city efforts in our community. As Sam mentioned, we'd like to share both the Youth Leadership Committee email address, which is at the bottom, Charlotte Sister Cities, YLC at gmail.com. Also our web address, which is www.cltsistercities.org. And as always, thank you for joining us. Let's envision the future together. Thank you for your support and have a great evening.